Young colonies, that is simple. In the colonies we issue our own money. It is called colonial scrip. We issue it in proper proportions to the demands of trade and industry. Colonial scrip had why loans from other banks? This money has created our inflation. We give the bank cash interest free, then they charge us interest on our own currency. Take a look at our history in view of the two banking systems, Ben Franklin, the two banking systems from the autobiography of Ben Franklin as reported by Gertrude Coogan in Money Creators, the inability of the colonists to get the power to issue their own money permanently out of the hands of George III and the international bankers was the prime reason for the Revolutionary War. Reference 4. Ben Franklin answering a question about the booming economy of the young colonies, that is simple. In the colonies we issue our own money. It is called colonial scrip. We issue it in proper proportions to the demands of trade and industry. Colonial scrip had no debt or interest attached. Reference 4, Bank of America. International bankers saw that interest-free scrip would keep America free of their influence, so by 1781 banker-backed Alexander Hamilton succeeded in starting the Bank of America. After a few years of bank money, the prosperity of colonial scrip was gone. Benjamin Franklin said, conditions were so reversed that the era of prosperity had ended and a depression set in to such an extent that the streets of the colonies were filled with the unemployed. Bank money was like our Fed money. It had debt and interest attached. By 1790 Hamilton and his bankers had created a privately owned central bank and converted the public debt, interest-free, into interest-bearing bonds, payable to the bankers. When Hamilton's bank charter expired in 1811, the international bankers started the War of 1812. By 1816, another privately owned U.S. bank was started with $35 million in assets only $7 million of that was owned by the government. This bank lasted for 20 years. U.S. History shows that currency with debt and interest attached created a depression. Reference 4. Andrew Jackson, a great president. When the 1816 charter expired in 1836, Andrew Jackson vetoed its renewal. It was then that he made two famous statements, the bank is trying to kill me, but I will kill it. Later he said if the American people only understood the rank injustice of our money and banking system, there would be a revolution before morning. Reference 4, Abraham Lincoln, another great president. President Lincoln needed money to finance the Civil War, and the international bankers offered him loans at 24 to 36% interest. Lincoln balked at their demands because he didn't want to plunge the nation into such a huge debt. Lincoln approached Congress about passing a law to authorize the printing of U.S. Treasury notes. Lincoln said we gave the people of this republic the greatest blessing they ever had, their own paper money to pay their debts. Lincoln printed over 400 million greenbacks, debt and interest-free, and paid the soldiers, U.S. government employees, and bought war supplies. The international bankers didn't like it and wanted Lincoln to borrow the money from them so that the American people would owe tremendous interest on the loan. Lincoln's solution made this seem ridiculous. Reference 1, p. 46, 47, Reference 4. Shortly after Lincoln's death, the government revoked the Greenback Law which ended Lincoln's debt-free, interest-free money. A new National Banking Act was enacted and all money became interest-bearing again. Reference 4, the late Thomas A. Edison explained the matter of issuing currency this way, if our nation can issue a dollar bond, interest-bearing, it can issue a dollar bill, interest-free. The element that makes the bond good makes a bill good also. The difference between the bond and the bill is that the bond lets money brokers collect twice the amount of the bond and an additional 20%, whereas the currency pays nobody but those who contribute directly in some useful way. It is absurd to say that our country can issue $30 million in bonds and not $30 million in currency. 
Both are promises to pay, but one promise fattens the usurers, interest collectors, and the other helps the people. Reference 1, p. 46, the Fed is foreign-owned. The Fed is owned largely by foreign banks that control our economy and Congress through the power of money and the media which they bought with profits generated with profits generated by artificial debt. If we can convert US dollars that are debt and interest-free to interest-bearing currency, we can change it back just as easily. Both the media and the banking system will probably claim that such a change will cause hyperinflation. The answer however, can be found in history. Lincoln printed debt and interest-free greenbacks, cash, to finance an entire war. With added production you can add currency without having hyperinflation. Lincoln proved it. John F. Kennedy a president with vision. On June 4, 1964, President Kennedy issued Executive Order 11110. This executive order called for the issuance of new currency, the United States note. At the time, $1,292,893 of this currency was put into circulation. This new currency was to be distributed through the US Treasury and not the Federal Reserve System. Furthermore, it was to be issued debt and interest-free. Upon Kennedy's assassination, this currency was withdrawn from circulation, never to be issued again. The media remained silent on how Kennedy would have eliminated the debt and interest payments, and therefore eliminated the Fed. Interest-free United States notes do not result in hyperinflation. By issuing United States notes, interest-free, we have less interest expense, and less taxes. With less taxes people spend more and buy more. This result is added production, and therefore, you can add dollars without inflation. Either Rockefeller and his people will spend your tax money into the economy or you get to spend your own money by paying less taxes. The bankers want you to think you'll have mass inflation by changing the system. This is only true if you add dollars to the economy without added production. For example, look what happened in post-World War I Germany. They merely printed money without increasing production. The result was hyperinflation. Another example, in the entire economy, if you have only 10 loaves of bread and only $10, each loaf would sell for $1. If you print an extra $10, now you have $20 and the 10 loaves which would sell for $2 each. This is only true if we don't have added production. By cutting taxes, people will spend more and buy more bread. If we print more money and bake more bread, we have $50 and 50 loaves, so each loaf still sells for $1. As long as you monitor production with increased cash, inflation will not occur. Under the Fed system, the price of bread has dramatically increased since 1913. If we cut taxes and you spend your money instead of the bankers spending it, you will have more bread, cars, and wealth than the bankers. Someone will spend your money, it might as well be you. A Fed-like banking system has destroyed other governments. In five years the only thing taxes will pay is the interest on the debt. Clearly, the Fed must be abolished before we're demolished. Already laws are set up to have a dictatorship when we have the Economic Crisis, Federal Emergency Management Act, or FEMA. Under the Fed system, when a new dollar is issued, we pay taxes to pay for the dollar as the principal, debt, plus interest on the dollar. We pay for each new dollar twice, and who gets most of the money? The bankers, who control this money. Taxpayers should only pay taxes for the paper, ink, and printing costs of new money. Why should we give bankers the right to print money on a printing press, charge them no interest on this money? and then let them exchange their free money for a government bond that pays them interest. England never gave up on owning the United States. They are still silently fighting the same revolutionary war. The Bank of England, through the Rothschilds, owns and controls the Fed, reference 22. We have been robbed of our wealth, 
and in five years we will be bankrupt if there is no change. The Fed bankers will legally own our nation, our houses, our cars, our businesses, just as Thomas Jefferson predicted. Specific plan, how to get out of debt US history proves that issuing debt and interest-free currency allows our economy to prosper, as long as Congress controls the amount of money created. You can add printed dollars into the economy as you add production, and there will be no inflation. With today's sophisticated computers, we can easily monitor the printing of money and inflation. Congress needs to buy back the Fed and or abolish it. Any government debt they own would be automatically eliminated. All remaining debt could be paid as needed with the same type of currency Kennedy issued, debt and interest-free United States notes. United States notes are backed by the full faith of the best government in the world, the United States of America. This is no different than the backing of today's Federal Reserve notes. US citizens collect only a small fraction of the interest income on federal bonds and bills. Foreigners benefit from this interest, but we pay the tax so that they collect interest on our currency. This makes sense to bankers and Congress people who receive money from bankers and foreign lobbyists. As we pay less interest, government spending will decrease and so will taxes. Less taxes mean that people buy more goods and services and our economy expands. An expanded economy means more jobs and higher profits for businesses. More profit means increased state-federal business taxes. Businesses continue to pay taxes while personal taxes decrease. People will have more money to spend, will buy more and therefore pay increased state sales tax. This allows the states to balance their budgets without raising real estate taxes. As history proves, we will prosper. For 80 years the Fed has destroyed our economy. It will take years to undo this damage. Just as Congress appoints a postal service, we will have Congress appoint an agency to monitor inflation as we exchange our retiring government debt for debt and interest-free United States notes, cash. We need to break up all central banks created by the Fed and return to the Constitution of the United States. We have to return the power of the citizens' money back to the people. There are several simple ways to abolish the Fed, asterisk inform all Americans of this report and collect signatures on the petition. Asterisk demand that Congress and the media support we the people's rights to uphold the Constitution and abolish the illegal Fed. Asterisk write to your local newspaper, show them this report and ask them to keep freedom of the press alive, support the Constitution and abolish the Fed. Freedom of the press should not be limited to those who own it. Asterisk write to CNN and other media. Tell them you want to see Fed UP, TM, on their programs. Asterisk ask your state county representatives to use their constitutional powers to enforce your rights under the Constitution to have the Fed abolished. Write to reference 5 for detailed paperwork to be given to your local government. Asterisk call in on TV and radio talk shows and discuss why the Fed should be abolished. Asterisk support businesses who distribute the petition and display the sign Fed UP. If they don't, please ask them to. Asterisk ask candidates if they plan to introduce legislation to abolish the Fed and uphold the Constitution which they are obligated to defend. Make candidates take a stand. Have the politician sign a contract with we the people enacting legislation to abolish the Fed by a certain date or the politician must resign from office. The Democratic Congress and President promised the people no Fed before the election. Thirteen months later, they passed the Fed. Asterisk display your bumper sticker to show support and inform people. Asterisk if 5,000 people distribute two to three brochures daily, we can inform half a million Americans monthly. Roughly 10% of these half a million people will make copies and inform others. Our goal is to inform 70 million adult Americans. Public opinion will soon be on our side. Once 10% of the population know, the other 90% will follow. Asterisk pray and ask God to return us to one nation under God. It is our recommendation that you research the references listed, 
support all organizations that are trying to stop this fraud, and help us in our goal to get every American to sign this petition. References 1. The Federal Reserve Bank, by H. S. Keenan, published by the Noontide Press, 2. National Committee to Repeal the Federal Reserve Act, P.O. Box 156, Westmourne, Illinois 60559, 3. The New World Order, Saving America, P.O. Box 1205, Middleburg, Florida 32050120, 4. Bulletin, February 1989 and November 1991 Issues, P.O. Box 986, Foot Collins, CO80522, Newsletter, $3 each, 5. The Most Secret Science. Betsy Ross Press, P.O. Box 986, Foot Collins, CO80522, Book, States Attempt to Abolish the Fed. $12, 6. Insider Report, P.O. Box 84903, Phoenix, Arizona 85071, 7. Phoenix Journal Express, P.O. Box 986, Tehachap, CA 93581, 8, $16 trillion in government and private debt, much of which the Fed printed and collected interest on, reference 3, 9, North Point Tactical Team, P.O. Box 129, Top Ton, North Carolina 28781. 20, The Law That Never Was Volume 1, Bill Benson and Arabi, Louisiana 70023, 11, Bulletin, June 1992 Issue, P.O. Box 986, Foot Collins, CO80522, Newsletter, $3 each, 12, Savings and Loan Unethical Bailout by Rev. Kasimi F. Giru. 21, New World Order, The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies by William T. Still, 22, the Secrets of the Federal Reserve by Malintz, 23, The Social Security and Pension Conspiracy by Metz, 24, The History of the Federal Reserve. How to Replace It or How to Reform It by Metz, for references 23 and 24 Write to Howard Metz, P.O. Box 341 Melvern, LI 11565, 25, The New World Order by Pat Robertson. On page 131 he states that we must abolish the Fed. 26. Operation Vampire Killer 2000, Highly Recommended Book. $6, $8 for 2, from ACLA, P.O. Box 8712, Phoenix, Arizona 85066 This is a must-read book with quotes from well-known people. This book proves conspiracy. Your local police needs to read this book so they will protect you, not become United Nations agents against you. This book will stop the New World Order plan to take over the USA. America Betrayed. Center for Action, 652 N. Glenview, Nisa, AZ85213 for references 1, 12, and 17. Contact the National Committee to repeal the Federal Reserve Act, reference 2. Media blacks out the facts. Here's one terrific example. John Swinton, the former chief of staff for the New York Times, was one of New York's best-loved newspapermen. Called by his peers the dean of his profession, John was asked in 1953 to give a toast before the New York Press Club, and in so doing, made a monumentally important and revealing statement. He is quoted as follows. There is no such thing, at this date of the world's history, in America, as an independent press. You know it and I know it. There is not one of you who dares to write your honest opinions, and if you did, you know beforehand that it would never appear in print. I am paid weekly for keeping my honest opinion out of the paper I am connected with. Others of you are paid similar weekly salaries for similar things, and any of you who would be so foolish as to write honest opinions would be out on the streets looking for another job. If I allowed my honest opinions to appear in one issue of my paper, before 24 hours my occupation would be gone. The business of the journalists is to destroy the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon, and to sell his country and his race for his daily bread. You know it and I know it, and what folly is this toasting an independent press? We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. 
We are the jumping jacks, they pull the strings and we dance. Our talents, our possibilities, and our lives are all the property of other men. We are intellectual prostitutes. Richard M. Cohen, senior producer of CBS Political News said, we are going to impose our agenda on the coverage by dealing with issues and subjects that WE choose to deal with. Richard Salant, former president of CBS News stated, our job is to give people not what they want, but what WE decide they ought to have. And what is their agenda? What do they believe we, the American people, the common herd, ought to have? Here is the answer, Norman Thomas, for many years the US socialist presidential candidate proclaimed, the American people will never knowingly adopt socialism. But under the name of liberalism they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program, until one day America will be a socialist nation, without knowing what happened. Herman Desmore, foreign editor of the New York Times from 1950 to 1960, the New York Times is deliberately pitched to the liberal, socialist, point of view. Walter Cronkite, news reporters are certainly liberal, socialists, and left of center. Barbara Walters, the news media in general are liberals, socialists. Reference for everything above Operation Vampire Killer, P.O. Box 8712, Phoenix, Arizona 85066 The world, finally including even the balky American public, is being rapidly educated into overcoming limited patriotism and accepting United Nations solutions to common global problems, said Henry Kissinger. Bilderberg participants expressed satisfaction with progress toward world government on two fronts, asterisk establishing a UN tax to not only finance new global programs, but to condition citizens of the world to paying tribut asterisk conditioning the public again, especially those stubborn Americans to accept the idea of a UN army that could, by force, impose its will on the internal affairs of any nation. Today, Americans would be outraged if UN forces entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful, Kissinger said, of the 1992 Los Angeles riot. Kissinger reported on a shocking speech made by UN Secretary General Butrus Golly to the American Association of Newspaper Publishers at UN headquarters in New York in early May. The publishers' newspapers covered up the story. The UN Security Council must have a permanent force that can be deployed anywhere in the world, instantly, to protect the peace and ensure human rights the Secretary General told the newspaper publishers. UN to invade US. This force must be allowed to intervene at the local and community levels, the UN leader told the American publishers. What is especially gratifying, Kissinger said, is that the publishers showed no reservations about the prospects of UN forces landing in the United States and imposing the UN's will. Reference, The Spotlight, June 8, 1992, page 10. Liberty Lobby, 300 Independence Avenue Southeast, Washington, DC 20003, Newspaper. Summary of Quick Facts Asterisk various dates and proofs that the bankers created panic to push Congress to pass laws favoring bankers. Reference 22 asterisk President Wilson received $85,000 bribe from bankers. Reference 22, pages 25 to 26 asterisk how England, through the bankers, controls our Congress. Reference 22, pages 47 to 48 asterisk Rockefeller is connected to President Carter. Reference 22, page 171, reference 25, page 103 asterisk how George Bush is directly connected to the Fed Bank. Reference 22, page 49 asterisk President Hoover and President Roosevelt were international bankers. Reference 22, pages 69 to 71 and pages 157 to 159 asterisk President Nixon was hired by Rockefeller's law firm to become president. Reference 25, pages 100 to 101 asterisk Fed owner's manual to destroy and control US citizens. Reference 22, pages 55 to 56 asterisk proof bankers claim they control the government. Reference 22, page 59.
Asterisk proof the Fed knowingly created the Great Depression for their gain. Reference 22, pages 137 to 170. Asterisk Fed bankers are directly linked to the New World Order and the United Nations. New World Order was discussed by George Bush, Rockefeller, Adolf Hitler, and Jimmy Carter. Reference 25, pages 5 to 7 asterisk the great seal on back of the Fed $1 bill, below pyramid, the Novus Ordo Seclorum means New World of the Ages or New World Order. Reference 25, page 35 asterisk how the bankers tax-exempt organizations fund activities to destroy America's freedom by attacking our constitution and way of life. Reference 25, pages 138 to 159. Reference 14, throughout whole book, asterisk Senator Barry Goldwater warned of economic powers capable of bypassing or controlling the political powers. Bank-induced depression is possible in the future to force political change. Reference 25, 131. Asterisk Rockefeller's money was used to seize control of America's teaching and training of students by rewriting history and textbooks. Rockefeller has also funded the National Education Association, NEA. Reference 14, page 61. Asterisk Gary Carr, high-ranking government liaison having first-hand knowledge of the New World Order exposes the truth. Read his book An E.N. Route to Global Occupation. Reference 14 Quick Facts from Tom Schauf, First, we must uphold the Constitution. Please call the hotline, 217-854-7504, weekly for new information. When a state considers a constitutional convention, concerned Americans call the hotline and it gives us the names and telephone numbers of the legislators involved. It tells us exactly what to say, and to whom. The hotline helps us to fight and win. Secondly, we must change the opinions of the masses with information. The brochure has been a big help, and once 10% of the population agrees to abolish the Fed, the rest will follow. It is obvious the media, radio and newspapers, have lied about the Fed and the efforts of Fed UP, TM, to educate people with the truth. This will not stop us, we will persist. Decide for yourself if you want to win America back. If 10,000 patriotic Americans each distribute 1,000 brochures, 10 million Americans will become informed. It would be almost impossible to stop people from talking about abolishing the Fed if that many Americans were informed. Another way you can participate is to put a bumper sticker on your car. Over 1,000 people every month will see that bumper sticker about abolishing the Fed. If you think our goal is impossible, remember this, only 3% of Americans supported the Revolutionary War, and we won that war. We can win this war too, but only with your help. In closing for the secret owners of the Fed to control the volume of money and become our absolute masters, they had to get the gold away from our grandparents. This was accomplished in 1933 with the threats of fines and imprisonments by their President Franklin D. Roosevelt with aide Harry Hopkins, who said, Elect, elect, elect tax, 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 spend, 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 for the people are too damned stupid to understand. By the way, Roosevelt was an international banker. Seafall's gold is green by Winston Smith. The Fed is slowly destroying America. Our government never had a chance, with political corruption ravaging its constitution. The asterisk real facts asterisk don't lie and neither do government documents, congressional record, Congressman Wright Patman, a primer on money prepared by the Subcommittee on Domestic Finance, House of Representatives, Committee on Banking and Currency 88th Congress, Second Session, August 4, 1964 and December 23, 1913, page 1464 and 1478. Congressional record, Congressman Louis McFadden, June 10, 1932, House of Representatives, pages 12604-12605 Congressional Record, 98th Congress, 1st Session, February 3, 1983, Congressman Ron Paul Congressional Record, 
Committee on Banking and Currency, House of Representatives, 77th Congress, First Session, Tuesday, September 30, 1941, pages 1342 to 1345 There are many more congressional testimonials is there bias in the media regarding the Fed? During the TV presidential debates, Clinton was asked should there be restrictions on the Fed? The next day, major newspapers said they covered the whole presidential debate text, but many newspapers eliminated this one question. Check your library. The Revolutionary War was fought and the Constitution was written to prevent other nations and private banks from issuing, printing, money and controlling our currency. In 1913, members of Congress committed treason and violated their oath of office to defend the Constitution against all enemies foreign and domestic by voting in the Federal Reserve Bank. For the new world order to create a one-world government, they must control a central bank, eliminate the constitution, end Christian values, disarm America, and control the media. The Council on Foreign Relations has openly said they will take us over in favor of a one-world government. The American people must be warned or we may lose our freedom forever. If we do not demand our rights and uphold the constitution, the CFR and bankers will continue their march towards socialism. If we allow them to continue, they will abolish our rights and put an end to our present government. I urge all Americans to distribute the main FedUP brochure, saving $6,000 in taxes per year, per person and balancing the budget, and collect signatures on the petition, see order form in the main brochure. Then all informed Americans can take action and hold their politicians accountable.